Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on LeadChess.org, and I just got paired up playing a 15-2 game. So let's see what we get. Alright, a French. Let's try to turn it into something other than a French. Like a King's Indian attack. So far, so good. Um, I may be going for e5 shortly, but first let's still retain some options with my e-pawn. Planning on g3, but let's make this universal move first. If they take, then I could come out along this diagonal. Alright, I'm going to go for it. g3, bishop g2 it is. Okay. Making the standard moves first. Not budging with any of my queenside pawns. Black will be looking for some type of play. Could turn into a race position. That's a little bit awkward. Okay, so stopping e5 altogether. Hmm. Well, at some point I could just be threatening to win material with e5. I'll need castles and rook to e1. And I believe I want to go with my rook to e1. Let's get this in. Rook e1 also allows for a knight reposition to f1. So let's see. Black is in a think. Not sure what candidate moves there are for black. I'll be looking at rook e1, and if queen c7, I could really insist on trying to get in this advance. So let's start with it. Threatening to win the material, the fork right now. Probably the fastest I've played the opening in some time. <laughs> so, queen c7. Queen c7, queen e2. I could insist on trying to get this in. Will black capture? I don't think that that would be a good idea. I could always recapture and then the threat is still there. And so in the end, you know, you're still having to address this idea, and my third rank pawn has been exchanged for white's, uh, black's fourth rank pawn. Okay, so they're sidestepping the fork. However, they aren't preventing me from getting this advance in. Okay, well... I play e5, the knight's going to move to one of these two. I imagine d7, as it's the more reliable home. And then... I don't know that I really have a good way to defend my e5 pawn. I think I would just be dropping it. Three minor pieces are hitting it. And my queen... on e2. She isn't a good defender. It would be different if the queen and rook were switched. But uh, e5, knight g4, queen e2, they could take. Knight takes, knight takes, and my queen isn't going to take. So I'm going to hold off on e5. I think I need a little bit more support. Um, I, don't, I definitely want to keep the queens on. And so with that said, I believe I want to go for queen e2, knight f1, and then I'm prepared for f4, because when it's hit a third time, I can then develop my bishop. So I think before I play e5, the short story here is that I need my queen on e2 and my knight on f1. Now, something I'm questioning is whether or not that's, I don't know, far-fetched. I don't think so. Let's start with queen to e2. It is a developing move after all. And who knows, maybe maybe black 
captures or pushes. We'll see. If d4, I'll be a, a bit hesitant to play e5, I think, because, okay, so we do have that. So, as I was just going to say, if I play e5, I am attacking the knight, but I'm inviting him to the d5 square. Okay. At the same time, if I don't play e5, might black just play e5, and then I'll be needing to play on the king's side with f4. Hmm. Okay, it's getting, it's definitely getting sharp. I, I definitely need to calculate here. Um, e5, it's true I give up this square, but I open up the diagonal for my bishop. And I stop black from playing e5. So suppose e5, and then it's attacked a third time with knight g4, knight d7. I think, I think I need to play knight b3. And allow this pawn to be captured, and in exchange, and in exchange for it, I get the c5 pawn. And if... They don't go straight in for that capture right away. Then at least I have bishop f4 to defend, and then I could reroute my knight. I'm going to go for this. Let me just double check. Hang on. e5, knight d7, knight b3. Knight takes pawn. Let's just say knight takes. That's nice news for my bishop. I'll take on c5, and I could pivot about on the e-file the e4 square. I'm going to go for this. So I'm looking for a counterattack against c5. He could be one. The e5 pawn could be one if black wants. Hmm. What I didn't take into account is knight on d7 is defending c5, but I should be able to still undermine the defense of the c5 pawn. I should have looked at that a bit more closely. Yeah. I mean, I could play knight c4, but mm, yeah, maybe maybe that's actually not so bad. Maybe that is the way to go. Yeah, because black would probably be a bit uh, crazy to play b5. You know, this is uh, one thing I question is the stability of the piece on c4. Okay, well, in the end, they're not looking to target e5, so... I may be able to now go in this direction with knight f1, h4, knight h2, knight g4. Hmm. What more to consider? Well, if they ever play f6, I could be assured that these two pieces will be happy. They'll have some new prospects along the e-file. Um, this move, while tempting to try and secure a knight on c4, I don't think he can last long on c4. And also, I have to bear in mind that if I'm playing a4, I'm giving up b4. And this can be a great bother, having a black knight exert pressure on c2. I don't want that responsibility for my queen. That said, I don't think I want to go to c4 with my knight. And so I'll probably go knight f1, knight h2. Yeah, let's do that right away. Keeping a, a nice structure, no no serious weaknesses on the queen side. My bishop's now free. Let's see what black does. They have to uh, get their queen side pieces working, so... Okay, they're headed for b5. Well, he's not uh, contributing. Let's set the h-pawn in motion. It's a big race. 
Uh, black is looking to attack me on the queen side, and I'm looking to attack on the king side here. Knight h2, knight g4, h5. Once h5 is played, or if h5, h, if h5 is played, there's a, a big question for black. You know, do you allow h6? Or not? <laughs> and I'm not sure what what the best answer is to that. Um, I've had my own difficulties playing the black end of a similar structure. If you're playing h6 to prevent white from playing h6, this pawn is sticking out like a sore thumb. We could easily see two minor pieces converging there and piece sacrifices immediately come to mind. If you allow h6, then that means f6 will be a hole. And I could look for a dark square bishop exchange. And then maybe just kind of, you know, weasel in some way for checkmate on g7. It's just a rough idea. Okay, well, they felt the need to take some action in the center. Clearly. Um, my first impression, well, aside from them taking action in the center here, I feel that it's a bit inconsistent to have rook b8 and then all of a sudden some play on f6. Okay. Well, let's have a look at the squares that are weakened with that last move. e6 and g6. Okay. Well, they're threatening to win a pawn. They are hitting it three times. I'm guessing I have to just take. Yeah, I'm thinking I have to just take, so... Let's just take. I have so many options there. I'll still be looking for this. Okay, well... I was thinking taking with the pawn is more important. As awkward as that may seem... I mean, it closes in this. I guess either way you look at it, there's there's going to be some problem. And the big problem I'm seeing for black are these squares here. These are now holes. And I could maybe look to pivot about on the e4 square. Looking at some more direct stuff, I have bishop g5. However, I think I want to keep this option open. Maybe my knight wants to go there. Maybe my bishop. I definitely want this guy playing. And how does he ever get playing? The bishop on c8. I'm not sure. Well, that's for them to figure out. Okay. Well, I could look at something like this. If this pawn moves, the knight's unprotected. Ideas like this spring to mind. I would be taking the knight with check. I should keep my eyes peeled for stuff along this diagonal. Their f-pawn has budged. Their king is still on g8. A knight on g5. A queen coming to h5. h7 is potentially uh, sensitive. I could look for this stuff. What about the things the black potentially has? Any sacrifice against G G3 isn't working. Um, I have this square covered. Watching over these squares. Definitely don't want this knight causing me any problems. I'm pretty sure right around here the computer would already be lighting up. It's some. There's some strong continuation. Let's consider, I guess they're looking for this. Or first here, and then, well, I don't know. I could probably start with knight g4. Hit the queen, and then go from there. Um, yeah, let's do this. On queen g6, hitting my knight. I could move my knight, just keep making forward moves, and 
with that, I'm threatening bishop e4. Okay, they're really asking for trouble, I think. Because now when bishop e4 hits, h6 is an issue. Also, my knight is within checking distance, so this pawn ever budges. Knight h6. Currently, my knight on g4 is hit. I'm thinking knight g5. Queen is close to trapped. Hmm. Yeah, that queen is very close to trapped. <laughs> Alright, I'm thinking on knight g5. Black has to play knight f6. Hmm. Knight g5, knight f6. I could exchange knights. And then always drop in here. Yeah, I'm just going to play this. Okay, now f2 is a little bit sensitive, but nothing that I... I don't think that that could be taken advantage of, so let's start with knight g5. They have to be very, very careful here. One, one wrong slip and it's already game over. Like, the tempting h6 loses the queen. These knights are covering so much ground. Knight f6, the queen has to feel pretty awkward, but at least there is a threat against my knight. It's not a a strictly defensive move. Well, in the end, can I not just be winning a pawn as well? I may end up in some pin if I try to go pawn grabbing. This is one of those positions where I shouldn't feel the need to... Hmm, win by tactical means, I could resort to positional, like some kind of uh, strategic approach. I do have a good structure. I have the, the better structure here. This is a, a very unhealthy pawn. But there, it really does feel like there should be some type of knockout right around the corner. Let's see. Under 8 for Team Black. Knight f6 is the only thing I'm uh, thinking. This isn't working. I'd take the knight with check. Easy to go wrong for Black. Knight f6, knight takes knight. Queen has to recapture, as otherwise this... It's collapsing. Knight f6, knight takes knight, queen takes knight. I think I still play here to e4. Then on h6, where's my knight going? Maybe it's my knight who belongs back on e4. I could look to target e uh, this guy. Yeah, maybe I could win that. Knight f6, knight takes knight. Queen takes knight, and then knight e4 hitting the queen in c5. Where would she go? Hmm. Yeah, clearly they they sense uh, pressure here. The biggest think of the game. Really not 100% on uh, what I'm doing. Knight f6, knight takes, queen takes. Oh boy. That is way too slow. The queen is just dead. Okay, so I'm pretty sure they see this. And they're looking to get two minor pieces for the queen. Yeah, otherwise I don't I don't see what... Uh, bishop e4, I'm, I'm picking up the queen. And they're prepared to takes, takes, and then discovered attack, and then they get this guy. Uh, it should never be enough, but I guess that's what their idea is here. 
try and f trying to strike some imbalance in the position. So I doubt that there's anything better than bishop e4. Let's do it. So what's their next move here? If their idea is, you know, to allow the queen to be captured and then this. Because they must have seen this, uh, I'm guessing, you know, if this rook move was played. To, to not challenge either knight when I have basically everything breathing down the black king's neck. Well, their hesitation tells me that maybe they did overlook this move. Hmm. Uh, we could definitely say that some time was wasted here. Rook b8, handful of moves later, rook to e8. How productive of a developing move is it really? Bishop d7, so... It's definitely a, def uh, a, a different approach for a black setup. Different story if uh, f6 was played without rook to b8. And even so, yeah, they just resigned. It's a short one. Okay, well, let's have a look at it. I guess they just uh, missed this idea. As mentioned, I, I said it more than once, it's pretty easy to go wrong. I mean, one one, one little slip, and, and that could be it. Let's have a look at the analysis and see what, uh, what kind of different approach there is for uh, Team Black. And let's also make sure what I'm doing is okay as well. So, French defense, well, King's Indian attack. I don't know. Um, this, this felt a little bit awkward. I played the black side where you just go here, a castle, and then you're not too quick to castle king side. You kind of hold off in the event that e5 is played, you know, I have some space over here on the king side, but uh, black has not yet committed his king over here. So there's still possibilities for, let's say, b6. Let's just say queen e2, bishop c8, and queenside castle. You know, with maybe even h6 and g5 ideas looking to come at my king. So it's a big, big decision to castle. Um, I would go as far as saying that uh, the decision with the bishop is big as well, because, you know, eventually this is going to be a threat. What ended up happening in the game is he had to move a second time to c7, and just, just to parry this fork idea. So some time was wasted, and to be wasting time in... A position type like this where it's a race and the element of time is probably the number one factor in these race type positions where you know well typically black looks to play on the queen side and I'm looking to play on the king side to attack but black tried to combat my e5 pawn head-on with f6 and uh, that just allowed me to well, it created some weaknesses within Black's position, uh, these two squares in specifically. Uh, I'm thinking bishop e7 is better. I like the these flexible moves. Bishop e7, queen c7, b6, bishop b7. And, you know, wait, wait to see if I'm in fact going to play e5 or not. Don't be too quick to commit the king. Yeah. I think I could already put the engine on. This will this will be a big moment right here. And I guess we're following one of the top uh, a top game here from 1999, which turned out to be a draw. 
So this this is a move here. And then knight d5. No games in the databases with that. Wants to go knight d7. Let's just have a quick look. Oops. Let's just have a quick look at uh, how this game played out once this decision was played, or once e5 was played. So we're following this game. I just want to get a feel. Yeah. I want to get a feel for, you know, the different knight position, knight on d7 compared to a knight on d5. Wow. It's pretty sharp stuff. Let's put the, uh, let's put the engine on. This feels very, very promising for white. Just these, these weaknesses over here. Knight jumping in. Yeah. I mean, the result is a draw, but we could see that. Oh, you gotta be kidding. That's the end of the game. <laughs> they agree to a draw in this position? Oh my goodness. This is one one of the more lively positions you're gonna see. I mean, this doesn't say this doesn't speak draw to me at all. They don't ha black doesn't have their dark square bishop. White has a dark square bishop, and there are these holes here. Okay, well, <laughs> didn't get too far in that game. All right, let's see. Let me put the engine on from this point and see what other things we could take away from this. So it's not a big fan of my knight to f1 move. And why is that? What does it want to do? It wants to play knight here. But I thought I would just be dropping this pawn. Oh, okay, I could I could be taking on c5. Two different ways to target that. Let's suppose b6 to defend. Okay, some some sharp stuff here, huh? Oh, wow. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Suggesting already to give up the queen. Interesting. Okay, so I could do better than the knight f1 move. As you can see, uh, it's, not, it's not a big fan of it. At the same time, this is uh, a position type that the computer can maybe get wrong. In these, you know, slow, slow building up type games where the pieces are steadily improving and drifting towards the the king. Um, I've had some games playing against computer where I've sacrificed a piece in, in this f6 square. Let me just make some passing moves to illustrate. Um, of course, black will be doing something more productive, but just to highlight, I've done something like this before. Well, <laughs> I'm still picturing that the bishop is on e7, and that we have a dark square bishop exchange. So this is this is a little bit awkward to have the bishop on this square. But uh, if you could just envision a, a, a dark square bishop exchange, and after this pawn recaptures, it's really supporting a knight jump into this square. And the end result is that white has established a great thorn in black's position on f6. A pawn that is worth far more than a single point. Um, but just, just to highlight a different one of the attacking ideas a bit available for white. Um, this capture and then a knight dropping into f6 and then getting the, the pieces over here going right after the king. Okay, well, knight f1, rook to b8 is what the computer is suggesting. Okay. Now h4. F6, okay, not a fan of F6. It, it's it's tough to really suggest something. I, it's my it's my feeling. It wants to take with the knight on F6. I mean, suppose they just go here. B5 seems like the right kind of follow-up, right? Play rook B8, B5. Knight here. I'm not sure if these are the most purposeful moves around, but... 
you know, just trying to crack something open over here. Now these pieces are drifting in. Yeah, this is a tough one for the computer to assess. Yeah, already sacrifices on h6. Isn't queen out maybe even a move? Look at that. It is. You know, you could sacrifice another piece. It's brutal. Brutal stuff. So, they went with f6. And then there's there's two holes, you know. As soon as they're recapturing with the pawn, or recapturing with the piece, these squares here cannot be defended by any black pawn, so. And of the two, this is the one that I'm looking to pivot about on. Hmm. Knight h2. Knight g4. Knight g5. Plus two. I guess they have to go in for that minor, uh, two minor pieces for the queen. Um, if it was to play out, I mean, what's the computer suggesting? H6. Bishop d2. Not a move I would really be playing. What if I just go straight in for this? I guess it's still kind of messy, huh? I'd maybe have to be a bit patient. Uh, I can't see myself playing bishop d2 here. Bishop d2 just giving up the knight. Then taking. And now doing this. Uh, to be pretty accurate there. But I could just go straight in for this and... Well, they're getting three minor pieces, aren't they? Yeah. They maybe should have played it out a little bit more. I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I thought that that was the idea that they had to get the two minor pieces or and then some, as we're seeing the computer suggesting h6, and maybe they get uh, three minor pieces, and I get the queen in a pawn or two. Hmm. Uh, what more to look at? Oh, this variation, the one that I said I wasn't exactly sure what I would do if knight f6 was played. Hmm. Yeah, if knight f6, it's reading plus one. I was eyeing up just the capture. And then a knight to e4 move. Yeah. Have to be careful about how to defend c5. Queen here, there's bishop f4. Or even f4. I guess I could chase the queen away from defense of c5. I wouldn't be um I wouldn't be too concerned about these pawns moving away from my king. I have uh very active pieces and they're not they're not in any position to organize some attack against my king. So that's what could happen if they played knight f6. I could take here this is no good because of f4, but on queen f5, now wants to go back to g5 with this. I don't want to draw. <laughs> I'd have to be coming up with something else. I guess we could look to target e6, bishop h3, rook e8, and now here, <laughs> with the difference being there is no queen f5. Now, that's interesting. It's not so common to uh, to see this, this move. Or it's, uh, that common isn't the word. It's atypical to pull the bishop off of this diagonal. But, uh, yeah, I could look to strike at this. Capturing right away runs into some trouble. Awkward pin. But first, bishop h3. And then this. This is... Much cleaner. Now f4. Queen here. Oh, wow. Okay. It's getting a little bit crazy. You have to work all those out. If I'm not winning this pawn for sure, I'd be a bit 
more hesitant to make these uh, advances on the king's side. I definitely want to hold something in my hand here. I want to have some material if I'm going to be making these king's side concessions. But, uh, yeah, well, they ended up just dropping their queen here. Easy, easy to do, easy to go wrong in this uh, opening and some time wasted. Again, uh, the bishop bishop to d6 move. It's playable, uh, of course, but uh, my, my preference is the already mentioned bishop e6, bishop e7, queen c7, and uh, you know, just going about it where you don't commit your king so soon. Uh, and I believe there's even one other, no, more, more than one, I'm sure, but I've seen a system where the king knight doesn't play to f6. You know, already seeing this right here, black can, black can go about a setup where it's uh, c5, knight c6, bishop e7, and knight e7. Or excuse me, bishop d6 and knight to e7. And a way to combat the e5 move is by playing f6, which is not without its weaknesses, of course, but it uh, doesn't allow this space invader pawn. It doesn't allow white to establish a pawn on e5. So just kind of giving you a feel for a different uh, uh, setup that black can be going with. On bishop d6, if you are going to go with that, maybe the knight is better suited on e7 which stays clear of the f-pawn, so he could look to fight for control of that e5 square. Okay, well, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below, and I hope you got something out of it. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.